for another Vaughan boundary. <laughs> well, he's a great fieldsman. Philip Tuffman, he often falls over and he's brought it into his batting as well. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club podcast brought to you by The Telegraph. Ben Wright, Michael Vaughan and Phil Tufnell with you today reflecting on a thrilling opening test between England and Pakistan and one of the finest wins on away soil in English cricket history. We'll get stuck into the captaincy performance of Ben Stokes described by Mike and others as one of the best ever and we'll be unpacking some brilliant individual performances too including some incredible bowling from Jimmy Anderson and Ollie Robinson and four centuries from England's batting lineup. And to top it all, we will be speaking to a true legend of Pakistani cricket. Shoaib Akhtar, the man nicknamed the Rawalpindi Express, will be joining us to give us his take on his opening test and England's first tour in his country for 17 years. Mike and Phil, we just had England's first test in Pakistan for 17 years and it was well worth the wait, wasn't it? I've never seen a test team play in that fashion away from home. I've never seen a team go to Pakistan at score at near on six and a half runs and over. And then a captain declares it to cool. you on day four and says, by the way, you can win. You can win. First game of a series, two to go. There's no captain in the history of the game, I don't think. And, and, and maybe there, there's been some way back that I didn't see, but there's no captain that I've played uh, with or against that would have declared it at tea on day four, knowing that there's two more tests to go and it's at nil-nil. Um, ben Stokes, Baz, they are doing something different. They are creating a revolution in, around Test Match Cricket. To see a full house in Ralpindi, um, to see all those fielders around the bat, to see every player pretty much contribute from an England perspective, to see Pakistan play their part. Um, I actually think it's now, eight games into the Baz and Ben combination, sending a message to the rest of the world is, look, for Test Cricket to survive, yeah. You know, and it to be the pinnacle and to be the best format. And we will say it's the best format because it's our generation. But yeah. for the youngsters that are coming through watching T20 cricket, watching the 100, for them to get on board in terms of watching Test cricket consistently, this England team are doing a, a, a great service to the game because I do think the younger generation are going to absolutely adore the way this England team are playing. And I just hope the rest of the world goes, you know what, we'll have a pop at that. Yeah. Why yeah. can't we play in a similar fashion? Most teams don't have a, a, as good a pool of players, but there's certainly three or four other teams that could play in a similar kind of fashion, which would be great for Test Match Cricket. Yeah. Talking of the pool of players, Phil, yeah. it, w- it was a match in which yeah. basically everybody contributed, right, from the England side? Absolutely. Great little moment at the end for Jack Leach as well, getting his wicket just to, just to seal it, as you say, as the, as the light was fading, everyone round the back. After the first two days, I must admit, I was thinking, even though you could see that England were trying to sort of like trying to get on with it and everything and what have you, I was thinking, oh, crikey, this could be an absolute schumer of a test match. On that pitch, which was just lifeless, tired, had nothing to offer, and then it just started to build and build and build, and it was gripping stuff. So it just goes to show that if you go out there and they're still with the right attitude, and they're still walking the walk and talking the talk, this England side, mm. that pitch was a huge test of their kind of new way about going yeah. about playing test cricket. And they pulled it off. They pulled it off brilliantly. And as you say, everyone contributed. Everyone out there went out there with the bat. Really, you know, happy to see Will Jack's got a six for, you yeah. know, bowling spin on that. Well, the way that Harry Brook played and everything, from, from what could have been one of the dullest test matches 10 or 15 years ago, turned in to be in one of the most exciting test matches. It was it was great to see. And that's the key point, Phil, that, you know, even a, a few months ago, a year ago, that would have been a dull test match. Yeah. That would have been a test match that we all would have switched off pretty much after probably a day and a half. This is this is a joke. The pitch is a stinker. Yeah. Because of the way England played and the way that they batted, every time England go out to bat now in test cricket, and even when they get on a pitch that's doing it, but you, you won't want to miss a ball. Yeah. Because you know something's going to happen, and, and and there will be a bump in the road. I'm sure there will be. We we saw a little bump at Lords against South Africa, but they've got this mindset and they've got this belief, and the culture around the dressing room must be so great for all the players to go and just play in that fashion. And then you've got a captain who goes out there tactically and goes to the opposition. Well, I'm going to keep the field up. I'm going to book fielders in catching positions. Yeah, you can score a few, but we're just going to still play you in terms of making sure that we're trying to get you out. Then I'm going to dangle the carrot because. 
basically says, look, we, we want to nullify the draw. Yeah. We want to try and take the draw out of the equation. Yeah. And I think England are going to do this. And if you actually think about the way that they're playing, trying to play that way in English condition when the ball's doing a bit is, is sometimes tricky because you're almost allowing the opposition bowlers into the game because yeah. you're playing so many shots. But overseas in Pakistan, in India, New Zealand in a, in, in a couple of months' time, the pitches are generally flat. The yeah. Kookaburra ball doesn't do a great deal after 10 or 15 overs. So I do see this England side scoring at well over fives consistently now. I don't think they're going to stop. And if you think about their, their kind of mechanism of, of the math side of it, if they bat 50 or 60 overs in the first innings and score at fives, they're going to get to a par score sometimes yeah. of 300. And I think that's what they're saying to the opposing team. We're like, you know, I, I said they were, yeah. they're like the Newcastle side under Keegan. They're just going to keep going at the opposition. Yeah, They're just going to keep attacking, keep being aggressive. <laughs> And you know what, Phil? It's horrible to play against, isn't it? If you're playing against a group of players and a yeah. coaching team that are willing to lose, yeah. and, and it's not they don't care about losing, but they're basically saying, all we're here to do is win. All our mindset is yeah. trying to get to the victory. Yeah. And if that means that we give you a chance to win, we're not bothered. Yeah. We're just going for the win. It's a very, very difficult mindset to play against. The thing that occurred to me, the sort of analogy is almost with poker. They've got a big pile of chips <laughs> and they are prepared to go all, all in. in. Yeah. They're prepared to go all in. All in on, on the first session of the test match. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes not with a great hand. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you're going in with seven two, but they seem to bluff, they, they seem in a bluff the right way. I mean, you know, as a captain, what you're trying to do um, at the start of a game is it, sort of like okay, take wickets with a new ball and then get control, isn't it? You, you you try and control the other side and then sort of like get in front of them as the game progresses. When you know that they're just going to be coming at you, it's a bit like that Aussie side that I played against with those top seven batters and they were just thinking to themselves, listen, we're going to go out there and that they were sort of thinking to themselves, we're going to try and score at four or five and over. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're going to lose a few wickets doing it, but we've got seven top batsmen and at least three or four of them are going to come off every time we do it. Two or three are going to get out trying to play this way, but it's very intimidating when you know that you just can't control a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and we we talk about the batting and obviously – a phenomenal the, the wicket was a road phenomenal batting performances and yeah. 1768 runs in the match third oh, highest aggregate test, test total over <laughs> the record remains 1981 but that was when england played south africa in durban in 1939 uh, and it was a game that was yes. dubbed the timeless test it lasted 12 days and it only ended because england had to go and catch the boat to get back to the uk <laughs> But this is this is the most runs obviously scored in a five day test, um, and as you said, it's the first t- time that a side has scored at more than a run a ball in both innings. But there was actually a lot going on in that last innings when um, England was bowling. There was a huge amount of tactics going on. They obviously started Probably. with the short balls, um, then they had some really innovative field placings, working on getting the reverse swing, uh, holding onto that old ball. So it's really in that last innings that. Uh, they won it, didn't they? You know, we must make something very, very clear. There's been many teams and many England teams that have gone and played on flat wickets yeah. and not scored at over sixes in Test Match cricket. So this team are doing something completely different and they're they're setting a benchmark for what's possible. And, and, a, and a player going into this England environment now, I think they're all naturally gifted in terms of wanting to score. You know, Crawley, Duckett, Harry Brook, Will Jacks. You know, Ollie Pope, Joe Root, they're all very naturally aware of how to score runs. Yeah. It's not about surviving. It's not about, oh, can you see off a bowler? I think, I think, Philly, the language in the dress room in our year, you know, years was, you know, get, get rid of him. You know, see off that yeah. bowler. You know, just, just see off his first ball, yeah. maybe his second. Yeah. And you, you'll capitalise on spells yeah. three and four. I think if you use that language in the England dress room, you get kicked out. It's not about seeing off a spell anymore. It's about, <laughs> right, all right, he might bowl you a good ball, but how do you score off it? Yeah. How can you score off it? How can you put pressure back on the bowler? It's a completely different mindset. You're absolutely right. The tactical side of Ben Stokes inside eight games, I, I, I thought he'd be a good leader. I really thought he would be a, a, an excellent leader. You know, we know he's a great player. I, I didn't realise how good a tactician he was going to be. You know, maybe he's got a few, you know, helping no. hands. Maybe Joe Root as a vice, you know, kind yeah. of beside him now is, is a brilliant foil for him. I had Marcus Triscothic, he was great. Jimmy Anderson, you can see, is doing a lot of the tactics with the ball. But it's still him making the decision. Yeah. It's still the captain that makes that call of who goes where. And tactically, I've been amazed by how good he is. Yeah. I, I think he's been as good as I've seen 
and and that's from me watching and, and playing the game for many many years. I think Ben's ahead of the trend. Yeah, I really do. I think he's miles ahead of many that are captaining at the minute. I mean, some of the field placings they had six on the offside in catching positions. Then they had leg slips. Obviously, Root got that catch down the leg side. Um, there was all sorts going on, and it all seemed to come off, Phil. What he does also is he, he just, on those kind of pitches, you can let the game drift, can't you? Mm. Like, you know, can just plod along and what have you. For, and I think we've got, to, we've got to mention here, that I mean, the one, the only way you're going to win that test match isn't with the bat. You've got to get 20 wickets. Yeah. I thought Robinson really bought into it. I think he looked a lot fitter, could keep running in. He bowled very skillfully. Jimmy Anderson, wow, just keeps churning out these match-winning performances performances at the age of 40 as you say Will Jacks came in and he just never let any session drift always looking for wickets always looking for different sort of tactical field placings as well I think it was a masterful I, I make you right Mike it was a masterful bit of captaincy it really really was oh, to try and eke out 20 wickets on that absolute road was was, was something special well, and what this England side are doing I know it's the Ashes next year and tickets are never a problem to sell but I think everyone's tuning in. Yeah, I think anyone that's interested in cricket, or even if you're not, you've heard, you want to watch this Test match team yeah. play, and, and and what they're doing for the game, and the longer for, we always wax lyrical about saving the longer format. The only way to save the longer format is to do what England are doing by doing. If you played a boring draw in in Ralpindi, is that saving the format? Is it egg? Yeah, everyone. I'll put a T20 game on. I'll put the T10 on from Abu Dhabi. You know, everyone was watching that Test match this week, yeah. and it's because of the England team. What, what, Mike, what do you think Australia are thinking? I mean, you just touched on it there, a long oh. way to go, obviously, but do you think they're starting to pick it? you think they're starting to just go, oh, hold on a minute? Knowing the Aussies, probably not. They're probably, oh, it'll, you know, it'll fail facing our bowlers. I, I, I'd give Australia a, a message now, get ready. Get ready, because I've seen Australian yeah. teams come to the UK over the last 20 years, and the bowlers have been hit to all parts. Yeah. You know, you know they, they've lost the lines, the yeah. length. Playing Australia, the aggressive way is the only way for me, you know, putting them under pressure. And I think Pat Cummins and Andrew McDonald aren't doing their jobs, and I'm sure they are doing, uh, if they're not actually going, wait a minute, something's happening in England. The, the, the team that we yeah. played against last year and the team that we saw in the West End is, is not the team like that anymore. It's a completely different no. operation, and they should be preparing themselves for the way England are playing now because it's not going to stop. You know, it's not going to start. The Aussies have great players and great batters. I'm sure they'll fancy getting runs. But, um, you know, that bowling attack, you know, of Cummins, Stark, Hazelwood, uh, Nathan Lyon, outstanding, world class. But <clears throat> we saw the Indian attack at Edgebaston get hit for 400 in the last innings. You know, so it's not that England aren't hitting great yeah. bowlers and, and real good attacks. They're going to try it against everyone. So um, Australia must get ready for this, uh, this juggernaut that's uh, happening over here. And England's bowling attack can get stronger. Yeah, yeah, stronger, and also the Duke ball. Yeah, you know <clears throat> everything about England. You got Joffrey Archer to come back, Mark Wood to come back. You got Anderson Broad. You got Ollie Robinson, uh, Chris Wokes in England uh, English condition, Sam Curran in English con. England's kind of um, storage of player now across all the formats is growing. Yeah, you know it's grown and grown and grown. I guess the one element is uh, high class spin yeah. in the longer format, but you know Jack Leach is playing a big part in the team. And that's what it's about. It's about operating as a team. And that's uh, exactly what England are doing at the minute. So, Mike, we're, we're joined by Sherb Actor on the show. Uh, he'll be joining us shortly. Um, obviously, the, the fastest bowler ever. Ooh, you yeah. faced him. What was it like? Oh, he, he, oh, he, he was rapid. The fastest by I'm not saying a country mile. Sean Tate bowled a quick spell. Um, Brett Lee. They'll stay in ball quickly at times, Wazim and Wakar. Uh, but show him back to it. was that run up. The Ral Pindi Express. Yeah. He used to push himself off the side. And sometimes the boundary rope wasn't, wasn't far enough back, so he had to come at an angle. <laughs> kind of come at an angle, a little bit of a, a semicircle. Oh, aggressive. Aggressive. Wanted to get you out, but also wanted to hurt you before he got you out. Nasty. The fastest to face by, yeah, a, a good distance. Yeah. Did he ever get you out? Yeah, he'd have got me out. He got me out in Lahore, I think. He'd have got me out a few times, I'm sure. He bowled... He, he may mention, I played against him in 97 for for Pakistan A. That's the quickest he bowled. Really? The quickest. He hit Martin Moxon on the head, first ball of the game, in a four-day game at Headingley, down the hill. I walked out with Martin. I said, 
Have they got any sort of, they've got this kid who's quite quick, all right? First ball, Martin in his open stands. He bowled this boy, him straight on the rose. <laughs> <laughs> first, first ball of the game. Thanks for coming. Who better to discuss an amazing test in Rao Pindi than the Rao Pindi Express himself, former Pakistan fast bowler, Shoaib Akhtar. Um, Shoaib, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Have you been able to digest the last five days? We've obviously been focusing on the performance of England. What did you make of Pakistan's approach to the game? I think uh, the Pakistan team was trying to save the test match. And on the other hand, England was trying to save the test cricket. So that's the difference that I see <laughs> last right. night. And, uh, and hats off to you guys. I mean, what a great approach. The, the team that I knew uh, under the leadership of Michael Vaughan, won the way they won that Ashes series back in 2005. And then... The way they came out of this test series, they were, they were, um, their confidence was skyrocketing, and they were high in confidence. I've seen, I've seen a one one of the best side uh, along with the flint off with a bunch of guys that who played the Ashes series, and now this time around, the same approach has been probably been seen after two decades, or after a decade and a half, it's been seen by under the leadership of, leadership of Ben Stoke. I think it was pretty amazing to see that. Shoei, can I can I reintroduce you? Because Ben said Shoei Bakhtar, fast bowler. I want to say <laughs> Shoei Bakhtar, very fast bowler. <laughs> <laughs> now, with you being so quick and so aggressive when you bowled, how would you bowl to this set of England players who you know are going to come at you hard? Warning, well, can I tell you something? Not that many people knew. I don't know whether I played against you back in 97 or not in Leeds when I touring Pakistan A. Did you play against me, right? I'll tell you a story. You hit Martin Moxon on the head first ball of the game. Froggy, right? <laughs> Froggy, yeah, correct. He became my coach. He's still showing his bruises to me uh, when I played for <laughs> Sorry, to answer the Warnish question, if I was there, I was there for at least for 50, 15, 16 years, I'd be bowling uh, on the dead, rugged, uh, and uh, zero no life on the pitches. So what would I did is that I made sure that I bowl a bouncers because the bouncers height does not leave your head because it does not climb on these sort of dead tracks. So when you bowl a bouncer, A, that you confuse with the pace, batsman always confuses with the pace, plus it does not gain height. He always hits you, hits you either on the head or either it's you, hits you on the chest. So you get bruised. When you get bruised in a pace, something like 150 above. So what you do after that, you put the batsman on the back foot and you do not try to bowl the Yorkers. What you do is you use the angle of the crease like Ben Stroke does. So you bowl a length ball and caught them off guard on the pads. So that's what you do. So we, as a toe crushers, kind of a toe crushers, <laughs> when we see the movement... And when you see the movement, so lateral movement is happening in, in, uh, uh, in a reverse swing, so we used to find the moments. You know, we found the length in the beginning, in the dead tracks. We open up our bodies for the first spell. The second spell, we try to gain the speed. And third spell, we always noticed about the Pakistanis. Pakistanis are bowling at their best after the lunchtime. The reason why, A, that they're waking up. <laughs> second, the ball is getting older. Thirdly, we found those moments, I and mean, we noticed that some of the spells that I pulled against you, Vaseem Bakar, they used to find the moments when the ball is reversing. And that's where we, you know, Yorkers comes in, that's where the length ball comes in. But we made sure on the dead tracks, we keep hurting the batsman and keep them on the back foot by bowling the bounces. So, so if I get you right, you, one of the reasons you bowled like you did and as fast as you did was because you were bowling on pitches like the one in the the, the test dead. this weekend. Yeah, dead. I mean, absolutely yeah. dead. Uh, the pitches that I bowled on, I mean, had I made a made a debut in '94 when I think Nasser, um, Rooney, Rani, they came into Pakistan in '94. I was supposed to make a debut back then. I lost about my prime years um, uh, by bowling on the dead tracks on the Pakistan. But we had no option but to reverse it. We had no option to but to bowl, bowl qu as quick as possible so we can defeat the batsman defences. So we had a one mantra in our in our in our brains that either we have to beat with the pace or either have to beat the batsman defences with the reverse. And if that two things comes together. 
we made sure before we do that, we hurt the batsmen and we keep them, push them on the back foot. And we used to abuse a lot, by the way. Sorry, this is says uh, um, <laughs> Aussie sledge a lot. Bro, we did a lot. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, what does that? And when your heart rate is about 180, 190 plus, you cannot expect a kisses from me. You cannot expect a kisses from Asim and Bakar. Bakar was like, Big time, big mouth. So, so what we did is like we keep them, keep them on the back foot, and that's where the reverse swing comes into play. Sure, but these pitches in Pakistan. I mean, Wasim Raja spoke about them just the other day. Is there anything that you can do? And if you were in charge, what would you be doing with the pitches in Pakistan? Look, I just would have gave you a fair pitches to play on. Come on, you wanted to save a Test cricket or not? Come on, you wanted a result oriented cricket or not. You know, the, Ramiz Raja speaking about uh, the making a dead tracks and again, I would have gone on to, you know, provide not the grassy pitches. I would have provide uh, a good solid tracks with the carry, with the ball carries to the keeper. Mm-hmm. I would have given an equal amount of chances to the batsman, but I would have given myself a chance to, you know, to hurt a few batsmen and to put them on the back foot and the ball able to carry to the to the keeper. And most of the time, I end up fighting with my captains all along the ways because all the captains were the, uh, were the batsmen. The, the night before the game, we see the pitches is, is, is nice and top greens and and uh, there's nothing there. And I used to go up to the captains and the manager and say, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> you have a faster score. Huh? In the history of cricket, you have Mohammed Sami, you have uh, Shabir, you have Mohammed Zahid. What is wrong with you people? Why are you not making, making a fast track? Are we going to win matches for you? And the percentages, the Pakistan has won matches for Pakistan. It is about 80% of the Pakistan bowling has won the matches for Pakistan. How was that test match sort of like received from the Pakistani press? I mean, it was great to see all the fans in there on the last day. I mean, I think it was a full house. You know, what, what, what's the sort of buzz about Pakistan cricket at the moment? When you pull, New Zealand pulled out from Pakistan, left us, left us nowhere, then your tour had been cancelled. It did not help our efforts to bring back the cricket into Pakistan. No matter what we say, no matter how hospitable nation we are. Uh, my great friends, Colin Wood is here. And the many guys that I know that I played with, against with, you know, they're here, they've been looked after well. It didn't help. But now the England and Australia made sure that Pakistan get his due back, which is a full-fledged series needs to happen and needs to be happened with the results. And it was so, you know, heartfelt kind of thing you know, for me, that England actually gave a chance to Pakistan to win the Test match. They did not did disregard of everything. They just wanted to go out there, want to play a game of cricket. And uh, people actually love that attitude from Ben Stoke. You know, it the mindset of McCullum and at the same time, the mindset of Ben Stoke is coming together and forming a formation where people are deciding that, you know, we're going to, uh, no matter we, we have an old bowler like a, Anderson, he might get injured. He might uh, lose a ball or two by bowling on the dead tracks. But despite all of that, you know, the decision of England team actually won the heart of Pakistan. And uh, people like me was just there for a lot of admiration and uh, with a lot of uh, um, praises for England team in terms of that, you know, they are the team and these are the unit to look out for because the decision was well received and you guys helped the Pakistan cricket back like is there no tomorrow and hats off to you guys. Well done. Sure, the, the way that England have played and it's not just been in the test match in uh, Pakistan but it was, uh, you know, across the English summer since Ben and Baz have got together, you know, expansive, being aggressive with the batting hand, trying to score at five plus and over, uh, being really aggressive with the field settings. It's almost like there's a, a, a revolution taking place. They're going to send in a message to the rest of the world. Look, the longer format, we need to change the way it's going to be played to get crowds in on that last day like we saw in Ralph Pind. Do you think other teams yes. around the world are going to follow suit? Well, you guys set up the traditions of playing slow back in the 
<laughs> so you were the one changing it now. <laughs> so thank you very much. You finally woken up. <laughs> what I'm just That's saying is enough. like, so you know, someone like Andy Flower comes in and changes the white ball cricket for you guys. Luckily, you have Freddie. You have you had you everybody. You know, back in 2008, you know, we were commentating and everything. But the thing is, you have changed the the way you guys played. And I always against, you know, uh, one thing that you know England needs to change the traditions. And you did that in the white ball cricket, and now you're doing that all over again in Test matches. You guys want to play a run of all in Test matches. <laughs> well done. The few of the players has done it before, like Warney, uh, Warner, Sehwag. Imran Nazir, uh, probably Shahid Afridi to some extent. Gilly, if I had it, had it, had it been opener in a test match, he would have scored about uh, 30,000 runs at least. So, <laughs> so, so, great to see that. But, you know, it's also putting more pressure on the fast bowlers. You know, the test cricket, Ronnie, you played, you captain England. Test cricket is bruising. Mm-hmm. It is full of, uh, full of traumas because your talent versus about is your talent is versus against my talent. It is your skill set about against my skill set, but it is also a lot of mental toughness along with the greatest fitness that you have been tested again. So the fitness has to be on top notch, but once you're playing aggressively, the way the England did, it putting a lot of pressure on Naseem Shah to get his act right and get your rhythm right, right from the word go. You won't get the... You won't get a chances like, you know, you come back in a second innings and you'll bowl a full fledge. You have to just come on the field with a full gas, you know, uh, we, we, you know, with the, with the high, with a great attitude in terms of, you know, you're going to be on right on the money right from the first ball. So, so you're putting a lot of pressure on uh, fast bowlers, but at the same time, this, uh, the new change that I'm seeing is which Pakistan is far behind. Pakistan management, Sorry, I, I speak very bluntly. Some of my friends get very crossed with me when I say things like that. Um, the thing is, the mindset is not there because they were playing for the draws. And that's why you made a pitch. Ramiz Raja is saying that I want to prepare the pitches and this is the outcome that you get. And I bet my life, Multan is going to be no different. Ooh. So it is England, again, that it has to produce a result. Mm-hmm. He has to declare it again. I hope Pakistan makes a good comeback. But, you know, with this mindset, you go nowhere. And I suggested to PCB 10 years ago, once you are down and about, you are out of the game. I says, you want to play a home series, don't play in Abu Dhabi and, and Sharjah or Dubai. You go out there, pay extra money, play in England, against England as a home series. And also away series need to play in England and go there wherever the country you wanted to go to. But you're going to lose a lot of series. But what is going to happen in another day, 10 years' time? You will have the players, those who have the quality, those who can play the seam, they, they, they can play the fast bowling, they can play on the grassy pitches, their attitudes are going to come different. But they never listen to me and still they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they might do on the podcast, sure. Yeah, yeah, we, like, we like blunt talking on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, Shay, yeah. you, talk, you talked about the pressure on fast bowlers. We might see Mark Wood uh, play later in this series. Uh, he gave a, an interview during the World Cup when he said he didn't think he would be able to join the 100 mile an hour club. And I saw an interview in which you th- said you thought he might. What have you seen in him that makes you think he can go a bit faster? You know what? Uh, a couple of things that I've noticed. I'm now going to start coaching here on the podcast. But you know what I see is that his follow through, he loses it there. He, he, thank God he shortened his run-up. He did, it, he did not listen to nobody. But what he does is, when he lands on the left foot, when he when he's collapsing, he's not collapsing. You see him often that he collapses on the pitch because he yeah. cannot control the follow-through. But if he's thinking that he cannot bowl more than 155, he is wrong there, sir. Absolutely wrong there, sir. What he needs to do is, A, that he needs to except the fact that if he needs to bowl 100 miles an hour, he needs to start pulling the trucks. He <laughs> needs to start. He needs, he start what I did, what I did to yeah, cross yeah, the 100 yeah. miles an hour against you guys. Well, I was going to ask you, 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 you went through these uh, special regimes, didn't you? Pulled trucks. Yeah. You bowled on a longer wicket with an extra heavy ball. Is that right as well? Uh, I, I actually made a pitch. It's about 26 yards. I made a ball about four times heavier than a normal ball. 
I started training for that before that. What I did is I started pulling a lot of weight. I started doing the bicycle with a lot of um, uh, um, the weights on it on the cycle. Um, then what I did is um, uh, I started getting the high repetition training. Uh, I used to do about uh, about a thousand rep on a leg extension on a one Ooh. leg, thousand rep on another leg st- extension. Knowing the fact that I never had the knees, by the way. <laughs> Um, and then I started bowling with the uh, with the weight on. It's called a sledge running. Yeah. So I started bowling with the weight on, and I started uh, bowling with a twenty six yard. So what I noticed, I able to develop the muscles which I never able to touch it uh, in my entire life before. But little knew, little that I knew that I was losing my knees at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Right. I'm losing my bones, my cartilage, and everything, even the shoulder and and my elbows and everything. So. So what I did is I always believed whoever can bowl about 150 Ks, he always had 10 Ks in reserve. And that needs to be extracted out with the right advanced training, with the full recuperation, the rest, which is very important, and keeping your fitness and the joints, how much you load you're putting into it. I think Mark Wood, he a great looking guy. A lovely human being, a beautiful action. <laughs> but you know, that's what I don't want to see. I want to see somebody spitting out, you know, pouring some, pouring some, you know, some You're fatty nasty bouncer. Show. You're nasty, aren't yes. you? That's, that's what I like to see. Do you think we'll see anyone bowl as fast as you ever again? Oh, I did. It was it was quicker than me? <laughs> I did. He was played with me. He was about a yard quicker. This is yard. He was yard quicker than me. He made me look both slower. Mohammed Zayed. Wow. Is that right? Mohammed Zayed and me, we were in the Pakistan Nets as a net fast bowlers for Pakistan team. And the South Africa team was there touring Pakistan 93-94 end. And they gave, sent us, you know, give a bit of a throwdown for the South African and for the Pakistanis. And we end up hurting about a f- three batsmen, including myself, <laughs> and four by Zayed, and they abused the hell out of us. <laughs> South African. I went up to Gary Krishna and said, do you think I'm a good enough fast bowler to play for Pakistan? He abused, slash. He says, they are stupid not to play you against me. <laughs> and I said, what about this guy, Zahid? He said, listen, he's a yard quicker than you. <laughs> so... Oh. Zahid, I think, he made me look both slower. And the uh, minute we landed in Pakistan camp and everybody was just going, oh, no, 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 not this guy, not this guy, not even that guy. So I remember about a 7 to 10 fast bowler who was a better athlete than me, who was a better looking than me, <laughs> who had a better joints than me, and who actually had a better uh, art of bowling than me. The only difference between me and them was probably I was a bit of a nutter when it comes to go getting kind of a kind of attitude that I had. So Zahid, I think the most most, the quickest guy that I've ever seen. Wow. Joe, um, it's obviously 17 years since England been in Pakistan. You were bowling in the in the last series in 2005 you got 17 wickets in the three tests i think was that the best you ever bowled no i'll give you a situation i'll tell you the situation before before the series i i was playing for booster i was all over the place my knee was like killing me and tom moody left tom moody left i, I assigned booster shy uh, because of tom moody because he was he was a brilliant guy fantastic coach he gave me rest for two weeks he said, let's go out there, enjoy yourself, train hard. He gave me a couple of uh, good uh, people to take care of me. He says, sure, I just want to see three matches from you in two weeks. That's all. Just play two matches or three matches. But when you run in, I want to see the sight of the fastest bowler. So I says, uh, you've got that right here now. So I'm playing against Northampton. So um, the pitch was very dry. And I... I got them out in, uh, I think, two overs. I think got six wickets. They're reversing like this much all over the place. <laughs> the Moody was running up and down. Tom Moody left. I left the interest. Club kicked me out. I left. We picked up, uh, I got picked up for a 2005 series for, uh, 
World Series against Australia to, to bring all the whole team together and the talent of the pool of talent together, beat Australia down. We were just out there partying. We did not care about cricket. We just <laughs> had a great time. Nobody's bothered about getting paid about $100,000. Nobody was bothered about playing for Pakistan. So we had a great time. And Freddie Fintoff met me in that situation. So he said, listen, you look like a Tarzan, Tarzan and he bowled like a Jane brother. You are no fastest bowler. And that thing actually got me triggered. I landed in Pakistan after a strain tour and my knees were gone. I had to end up end up taking about um, four or five painkillers, extracting a lot of uh, fluids out of my knee. And I wanted to target Mr. Freddie Flintoff. <laughs> and he just... He just woke me up. <laughs> Thank you very much. He, I saw, Cheers, I finally Freddy. got him in Faisalabad. I said, you and me together, you big guy, you're not more good looking than me. So I'm going to go out there and kill you. So I started going <laughs> dances. Remember, Wani? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. So are you collateral damage, Mike? Well, I can't believe what Freddie did. I was going to ask you actually, uh, Shay, but who was your most prized wicket and who was the one that you wanted to hurt the most? My prized wicket. But I claim to fame, I think, came from Sachin Tendulkar bowling him on the first ball. And, uh, you know, I went up to I went up to ask many Indians, Indian players in the Indian camps. I said, I wanted to see the god of cricket. And that is back in 98. He says, don't you know him? I said, no, I would like to see him because I want to see him because I need to bowl him out on the first ball. <laughs> he says, listen, are you, are you for real? I said, no, no, I'm looking for him. Where is he? So Sachin, being a nice, greatest guy on the on the planet Earth, greatest batsman, I went up to him, I looked at him, I checked out him, I said, brother, you have no chance against me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got him out on the first ball in Kolkata. First time ever happened in a history of cricket. Because of me, he got out on the first ball. Because of me, that he got run out. Because of me, the seventy to 80,000 people need to be evacuated from <laughs> Kolkata Stadium. <laughs> First time, the match was delayed. The test match was delayed because of me for two hours. First time in the history of in, 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 in the world, the match was played under the 100,000 people. And now there is nobody. And I was bowling. <laughs> <laughs> so we won the test match in, back in 98. It's crazy. <laughs> and who, who was it that you wouldn't mind hurting, Shoaib? If, if you had to get out one, one, one or two players, who, who, who did you like to bruise? I mean, uh, I had a knife in my hand and uh, he had something, I think some plates or something. I don't know what kind of things that he had. He was a far more bigger than I thought. Matthew Hayden, we were <laughs> on the breakfast table like this, standing against each other, wanting to kill each other. <laughs> and I said, I had no standing, no chance against this guy. I had to just rip him apart with something. With a button knife, and we were just about to about this. We were about like this to hit somebody. Thank God for that. My physio turned up all of nowhere, and he just pushed us away. I said, "Thank God for that." This bigger guy would have just smashed the you know mince out of me. So, <laughs> so, so, what was the background to that? Why why did you get why did you get into a, a quarrel with him? Uh, why did I get a quarrel with him? Because he was playing uh, a side game against me in Queensland. Uh, we got a footage there too, mind you. And I hit the, he came on the front foot, pulled me away. I said, listen, this is Shwe Bakhtar, not Shwe Malik bowling <laughs> in. He <laughs> said, are you out of your mind? Are you hitting me on the front foot? So what I did, I pulled him at two nasty bounces and he was in a lot of pain that he didn't show nothing. And we hated each other for at least for five years until we became best of the best friends. <laughs> and um, I said, why did you hate me so much? He says, I thought you are kind of a C-grade actor in a cricket. And I told him, I said, you're the most ugliest guy that I ever met in a past, uh, in a world cricket. <laughs> so I never liked you. And you don't like me, so just why don't you have a game of cricket on the pitch? So I got him out each innings in Perth 
got him out again in Melbourne. Then he got out of his form for at least the rest of the year. <laughs> then we became friends after that. What a great guy. I mean, I've been dreading for him and he was dreading for me for for five years. And we until we became friends when we worked in India together. We shared our family lives, the thoughts, and uh, how much he loved Andrew Simons, how much he loves his teammates, how much he cared about his family. And I'm not a lovely guy, but I love to hurt him <laughs> and just a langer. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. We could talk to you all day, I think, yeah, but we, we, we haven't got all day, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we've got a section of the show where Phil asks some either-or questions, so we'll, we'll hand over to him to do that now. Here we go. First one, the tricky one to get off the mark with. Wazzy Makram or Wakar Yunis, who would you have? Greatest? Yeah. Wazzy. My ideal? Wakar. I was the ball picker for Waka Yunus. I used to sit in the boundary like a young guy from the school. I used to pick up the ball. I used to give Mr. Wiki, Mr. Wiki, sir, bye. Well done. Go out, go out, ball fast. I said, shush, shut up, sit down. He's getting hammered. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then he realized, he says, who are you? And I said it in my heart, the one who's going to take your place in the team. <laughs> Next one, next one, shall we? Next one, Somerset or Worcester? For me, Worcester was worse. Somerset, all the way. <laughs> Lovely. Next one, clean bowling Raul Dravid and Sachin Tendulkar in successive balls at Eden Gardens in 1999, or getting Ponting, both wars, and Adam Gilchrist in 11 deliveries at Colombo. Which one would you go for? What was your favourite? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I cannot make a 1.6 billion people angry. So I think I would say uh, Sachin. The better delivery was the uh, Rahul Dravid one. But I reckon, I think, uh, claim to fame, I should be thankful for that. Uh, Sachin Jaluka, all the way. Yeah. That delivery. Yeah. And that was the first ball, that was the first ball you'd ever bowled? Yes, him, the right? first ball. And the third ball I broke, Lara came in. I said, Lara, it's been seven years since I wanted to bowl against you. He says, man, you want to kill me? I said, no. <laughs> it's been a seven years since I wanted to bowl against you. And now I've got a chance to bowl against you for the first time. So third ball, he was in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked him down. <laughs> Next one. We've got two more, mate. Two more. Um, Yorker or bouncer? Yorker or bouncer? Oh, the sound of the wicket. It's so wicked. You know, it gives an explosion of atom bomb. It explodes in your chest when the ball, the ball hits the stump. And it has to be a Yorker. And that sounds, yeah. it's just, I cannot explain the feeling. It's just the youth, the most happiest guy ever till you bowl the next ball again. You just love it. I wanted to bowl a Yorker all the time. Yes, Yorker. Lovely. And then the last one, ice bath or... Hot soak. Oh, I loved an ice bath. It really helped me every time. Oh. Ice bath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ice bath. Every, all the time. In the morning, ice bath. In the evening, ice bath. Uh, knees are in the ice. Everything shrinked because of the ice. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 Brilliant. Brilliant. So, do you, you, by the way, do you still in, do you still endorse every product in Pakistan? Uh, but my agent, yeah, it got me a lot of work. I've just done a shoot now, uh, uh, which is really, really perfect fit for me. I used a mattress ad, you know. So I did that just now two years ago. But I do it, yeah, I regularly. Let's say me and Nafri are still a star, yeah. So we do a lot of work. <laughs> we make tons of money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to ask that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Sherb, oh. thank you so much. It's been such a joy to talk to you today. I didn't think for warning, man. I didn't think. I mean, he's been a brilliant guy. Philly, we always love. And we love him as a character. He's uh, enjoyed his cricket. Warney, I mean, hats off to you, brother. You've done a wonderful job in 2005. It was a tough series. And the way you pull it off, your team, your management, it was fantastic. Anything for you, brother. Love you.
Blimey, what a whirlwind. Phil, he, he called you Mr. Phil. I think I think that might be your, your new nickname from now on. <laughs> Mr. Phil, I love it. Well, what, I mean, a, what a character. Um, you know, obviously loved bowling fast, didn't he? There's not enough people who love bowling fast. He lived for it, didn't he? I mean, amazing. You know, his body, he was talking about his body and what he had to go through and what have you. But, uh, yeah, like like hitting people, like getting people out, and uh, just what a character. What a, I mean, he's a million miles an hour as a character, let alone when he bowled, and, and, and it sort of shows, doesn't it? Great great to hear him speak there. He, he generally is, over in, in, and globally in cricket, but particularly in packet, he's, he's a superstar. Yeah. As he mentioned, his, his endorsements, yeah. uh, everything about Shoei Bakhtar, wherever he goes, he's got a YouTube channel. Yeah. You know, the cameras follow him everywhere. You know, you saw him at the Ralph Pinney Test sat in that comfy chair. The camera's onto him all the time. The crowd erupting. Yeah. You know, he he is very much a, a, a superstar of Pakistan cricket, but also just generally of Pakistan people. They adore his effort, you know, his aggression, his energy. You know, a little a bit of controversy now and again. Yeah. Everything that he brought to cricket was just headline. Yeah. That's exactly who Shoya Bakhtar is. He just creates headlines. They're making a film about him, a biopic called, yeah. called The Rao Windy Express. I don't know. We oh. should have asked him whether he has uh, veto rights on, <laughs> on the actor to play him, whether he's going to be good looking enough. He's an entertainer. When he bowled, he liked to entertain. And, and, and he would be great. He would have, could you imagine him in this sort of era of cricket now? Yeah. Wow. People would have been flocking. They did it those days. But I mean, what an entertainer. Uh, Phil, you've talked about how spin bowlers have to maybe have a slight screw loose to to be spin bowlers. Do you think that's true of fast bowlers as well? Who are the sort of craziest people that right. you've come up against? Yep. The, the fast bowlers, I mean, the, well, spin bowlers for a start off, the old body doesn't take quite as much of a pounding. I mean, we were listening to show it there. I mean, you know, he's had hours and hours in the gym. Perhaps the old spinners perhaps don't have to quite do that to perform at the highest level. But, I mean, hours doing the crunches, hours doing the weights, and then also having to put the body through it to perform. If you want to perform at the highest level, you've got to endure a bit of pain. But how about you, Mike, as a, as a batsman? You were the batsman of the, the aristocrats of the game. But uh, you obviously had to manage a few bowlers. A few crazies. Yeah, yeah. most of them are a little bit uh, wacky. I mean, you look at that. I mean, I was very privileged and, and honoured to captain Simon Jones. Brilliant. Pip wacky. <laughs> Matthew Hoggard, not quite as quick, but mad. Uh, Steve Harmison, very, very quick. Uh, a bit wayward at times, but great. Uh, mad. Uh, Freddie Flintoff. Unbelievable bowler, very, very quick at times, but also mad. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit of a common trend around that yeah. era of uh, quick bowlers. Darren Goff, Andrew Carrick, uh, Dominic Cork, yeah. Yeah. Craig White, probably the, the sanest of all the bowlers that I probably played with was Craig White. He said very little and just got on with his job. Quick look ahead to the next test. Very short turnaround, only three days. Are we expecting another quite boring wicket? Yes, I think so. Well, I think Shoeb touched on it there, didn't he? That it's going to be probably another flat belter. Uh, so England, I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see if England then, with this lead, Mike, sort of like just temper it a little bit and don't let <laughs> Pakistan <laughs> into the... <laughs> <laughs> Seems unlikely. Phil, come on, <laughs> come on. I think we've 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 all have to uh, just start realizing that there's something happening. I don't think it's going to be boring yeah. anymore. I think uh, Test cricket, England, yeah. when it's on, tune in. Yeah, it'll be interesting to if they lose yeah. the toss because I mean, if it's a flat wicket, they would presumably want to to bat first again. But uh, Stokes quite like quite likes chasing as well. So yeah, I, don't be interesting. Think, I, I honestly don't think it's an issue with them because. Well, they're going to play aggressively. The opposition playing England now will know that they, they have to get a big score. It's going to take them a lot longer to get to that big yeah. score. England will then just go, OK, you've got 500. Well, we'll get that in 100 overs. Yeah. It's almost like scoreboard pressure without any runs yeah, on the scoreboard. I'd, I'd, pressure obviously does play a part because individuals, um, you know, and it can't be that it's just purely a, a, a fun environment. There'll be yeah. a little bit of stress in there. It's test match cricket, but... You know, I think the message is, is very, very clear inside eight games that England are going to score quickly. They haven't yet had a game against anybody, really, when they haven't tried to score quickly or not score quickly. Mm -hmm. They've had that one blip against uh, South Africa at Lords. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's what we're going to have to expect. It's a, a great way of playing. It's, it's very sensible in a way. I know yeah. it sounds mad to say that, but it's very sensible when you've got the mindset of the modern player. Yeah. As I said, the modern player is a different mindset to what I was brought up. You know, I was brought up to defend and to bat for long periods of time. This set of players have been brought up to score quickly. Yeah. And if it means you only bat for an hour and a half, by the way, if you do that in this series, you're going to get 50. Yeah. In, in our time, if you batted for an hour and a half, you might be on 20, 21, 22, and you're in, you get to lunch. But it's a completely different era and it's a different way of playing, but I love it. Yeah. Absolutely adore it. It's interesting you said you made the analogy, Ben, of, of all in and playing poker. It does put the pressure on you, but sometimes you've just got to have half an eye just in case the bloke's sitting there with Ace King and you're going <laughs> all in all the time. <laughs> that will be the case next summer against Australia. That they may come across a team that yeah. does have that Ace and King. You Pocket just never rockets. know. Yeah. yeah. It was interesting actually because just watching Stokes in the batting in the second innings, and he obviously got that three ball duck, played a horrible, horrible shot, caught at mid wicket. And usually there'd be quite a lot of criticism off the back of that. But it makes sense within the context of this team, doesn't it? Because if he's giving away his, his I mean, they, he would be accused normally of giving his wicket away recklessly, but really he's living his creed. And the, him dying by the sword is enabling the rest of the team to live by the sword. Yeah, and also by the time he, he got out there, the England side were quite a, a good distance ahead anyway. Yeah. So, uh, look, we, we, we know what Ben's trying to do, and, it, and it's the right style of message. You go back to Owen Morgan back in 2016 when he tried to make sure that all the, the England white ball team knew exactly the style of cricket that yeah. he wanted them to play. He had to play it himself. And if, if, if he was extra aggressive, that's the way that he had to go. And Ben Stokes is doing that now. He's basically saying to the team, look, you know, you look at that second morning, I think he danced down first ball and hit for six. Yeah. You know, off Nassim Shah, a, an eight-shot mile an hour delivery on length, he hit it straight down the ground for six. There's, there's a lot of, you know, science behind what Ben's trying to achieve in terms of mentality. He's basically saying to all the team and those that are watching the England team trying to get into that side. And Baz mentioned last week about the depth of the players that aren't in the side. Yeah. It's a very talented group. You know, Ben's basically saying to all those players that are watching, you've got to play risky cricket. Yeah. Under my leadership, you've got to be aggressive. You've got to play risk. Uh, and we're, we're out to win. Don't even... The D word, draw, it's not, not, in, not in our kind of DNA in this dressing room. It's all about winning. It's all about being aggressive. And more importantly, it's about trying to entertain many, many people to watch Test Match Cricket. Yeah. The, the D word has become a dirty word, literally. But then also they've got a, they've got a hell of a lot of goodwill now as well. Oh, yeah. Even if Pakistan had knocked that total off, even if they'd have knocked that total off, they would have still been applauded for the efforts that they're doing. So that goes a long way to sort of like keep that juggernaut rolling. You, you, feel, like, you feel like you're doing cricket a service. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. not, there's not often that you get to a, a situation where England look like they may lose and I get a call and say, oh, you've got to do your column and all I can do is think about praise. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't have criticised yeah, exactly, them at exactly. all. At all. I could have. Well, How do you criticise no. a team yeah. that's playing in that fashion? So you're right. They, they are earning a lot of goodwill. And also, that they're, they're, you know, it, it's, it's gathering from what I can see on social media a lot of people that necessarily aren't always commenting on cricket yeah. starting to comment, and it's not the be-all and end-all, but the more you can grab more people that aren't used to being die-hard cricket fans into watching, the bigger the pool of fans are, are created, and uh, obviously Test Match Cricket. Test Match Cricket is the winner. Right, that's it for today on the Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club. Huge thanks to Sherb Actor and to Mike and Phil too. A reminder, if you have any feedback for us, it's much appreciated. The address is Cricket Club at telegraph.co.uk. We're very keen to hear from you. If you're new to the Vaughan and Tuffers Cricket Club, our channel is full of interviews with some of the biggest names in the game. That includes last week's chat with England head coach Brendan McCullen. It's well worth heading over there for a listen. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. But that's it for this week. So until the next episode, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>